Hey everybody, welcome back. So behind me here, I have a 27 inch, that's right, over two feet tall, gigantic quarter scale Hulk that I just finished printing. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to fill the gaps and the seams in this monster. So the purpose behind this video is to show you how to fill seams and gaps. And first and foremost, I'm gonna show you how to prevent the gaps from the get go. We're gonna go into orientation on the build plate and I'm gonna show you how I set up my models for success and get that straight edge. That way my seams and my gaps are minimal. And I'm also gonna show you a few things that I used to fill those seams and those gaps once I got my model completed. So the reason I'm showing you this is because I know that you guys out there wanna print bigger models. Like this big Hulk behind me, I could not print it on a smaller printer. So yeah, I've got a couple of large printers now, but I still had trouble fitting this guy on the build plate. So I had to cut him up in mesh mixer and I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. And I know what you're thinking, if you cut it up, you're gonna have all these nasty seams and gaps and everything like that, so it's not gonna fit right back together. But I'm gonna show you how to prevent that and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put these things back together flush with minimal seams and minimal gaps. But hey, before we do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also hit that notification bell, that way you don't miss out on any future videos. All right, so let's dive right into it. Okay, so I have imported this image here onto Mess Mixer, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and hit edit, and I'm actually gonna do a plain cut on it. And what this does is it'll actually do a line here, wherever you want it, you can adjust it from the controls here. But essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this in half and I want to keep both halves. So I'm gonna keep both and accept it. And then it is going to look whole again, but then I'm going to separate shells here. And you'll get a whole bunch of these types of shells. I'm not really too concerned with those but I want the top half and the bottom half. And when I am ready to export them, I will just export the one to a different file. We'll just call this one here base half. We'll just export it and save it. And it'll actually write all the vertices and save it to the destination in which you sent the file. And I'll do the same thing with the second half, the bottom here. And we want to export that one. And on this one, we'll call this base half two. And it'll do the same thing. All right, and there you go. You've saved each half. Now you can exit the program. All right, so now I am in Chi2Box, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to upload this one file here. We got half of it right here. And so I want to increase this. Now I increased my Hulk size to 400%. We're only gonna do, let's say 200 on this one here. Now, once I have the file in, you're gonna see that the flat edge is down on the bill plate. I'm actually going to change that. So because this is a rock, um, you don't have flat surfaces on this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to flip this over and set it at a little bit of an angle. Something very, very simple. And then I'm just gonna hollow it out support it so I'm gonna hollow it out and when I hollowed it out I did hollow it out at 1.5 millimeter with a 5% grid 3d infill and as you can see that infill acts as a, as a support and it's not a true infill and then what I'll do is I'll actually go in and on the holes, I'll increase these to 10 millimeters. And I'll just go in, add me some drain holes to this side. And I'll add one to the back back here. And after I do that, it's very simple. I'll just go in and add supports. 
I usually do auto support, so I don't do pre-supports. The one big thing here that I do that's different than most people is the density percentage. As I stated in a previous video, I only do this at 20%. That way it does not have a ton of supports. It only has what you need. So therefore, uh, less distortion and less issues with supports coming off. As you can see, that's plenty of supports on there. If you were to do the default of 50%, it's gonna have a ton of supports on there that you just really don't need. So then once I get done with this, I'm just ready to slice and dice, put it on the printer and print it. It's that simple. It's So let's take a look at Hulk right here. So on the arms, because the model was not keyed, um, I actually had to split this in mesh mixer. And as you can see, the seams right here, it's a pretty flush fit. So all I'm gonna be able to have to do is to just put a little bit of filler into there and it's gonna line, it's lined up really, really nice. And we have the same thing all around the model, like here in the arm. It's a very, very flat finish. Uh, there's gonna be minimal filler on this and minimal sanding. So um, yeah, so I mean, like if you were to put your supports on this flat edge here, you're gonna have all kinds of warpage and it's just not gonna look right. You're gonna have to do a lot of sanding. Another example is this Joker model here. This is also from Wicked's uh, 3D Berserk DC Patreon. And as you can see, this was printed on a smaller printer, um, but right here on the legs, it's flat. I mean, the surface is flat. So I didn't have to do any sanding in order to put this thing together. Um, I will have to fill it on the seams, but uh, I will not have to like do tons of sanding on it or anything of the sort because it's a flat surface. It's pretty flush fitting together. This model was printed on a smaller Linant Base 8K printer. It's the same equivalent as like the Mono X or the Elgu Saturn. Let me show you a couple things here on the base for the Hulk. This is actually a three piece base because this thing is so massive. There is no way that I could print this thing all on one printer. So after I cut it up, um, I did this on mesh mixer, put a huge drain holes in it. That way I could actually cure the inside of it as well with a, with a uh, UV light, a UV pen light that is. And if you notice here, all of these surfaces are flat edge surfaces. I mean, this is a huge, I mean, you can see my hand here, uh, but this thing is big. All these pieces are big. I did have a little hiccup right there, which that's not a big deal. That can be patched. But all of these surfaces are flat. I haven't really sanded anything. I mean, this one right here, I sanded a little bit because of the supports were kind of on the edges right here. We're hanging out, as you can see right here. But all in all, this thing is a flat surfaced base. As you can see, the edge is pretty straight. So now all I gotta do is, I'm just gonna put these things together, like so. And I'll have a little, get a bit of a seam or a gap here, but it's not an obscure one. And all I'll have to do once I get all this fit together better from not holding the camera with one hand, but you can kind of get the idea, it'll fit flush together and there'll be very minimal seams and this thing will look really, really nice once I get it all filled and, uh, or, I mean, it's just, it's just gonna fit really nicely. I could not be happier. All right, so there are a few things that I use whenever I'm filling up seams and gaps. And the number one thing that I use if I have a larger gap is, I use this Aves epoxy right here. This is a two-part epoxy. And this stuff is very durable. When it dries and everything, you can sand it uh, and you can shape it, you can sculpt it. You can do all kinds of things with it. But I use this like whenever I have stuff that I just, like if I had that patch earlier I had, I'll actually use some of this in order to cover that up because I know it can be sanded. It hardens up nice and I know I can sand it. So this is what I use whenever I have those gaps that are just ugly looking and I need to sculpt it or something that I just don't want to reprint because it's just going to take another 20 to 30 hours. And I actually have a link to this below in the description. It's an affiliate link. Um, it's available on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks, 20, $25 for this. And this stuff will go a long way. 
Now the second thing that I use for lighter seams and gaps, and I absolutely love this stuff, and that's this DAP plastic wood filler right here. So this stuff was like four or five dollars. I think I got it at Lowe's or Home Depot, and it goes a long way as well. It dries really quickly, and you can sand this stuff in no time at all. But I use this for kind of light to medium gaps and seams. You can also thin it out with water and uh, make it spread out a little thinner if you need to for light scuffs and scratches. Another thing that I use is exactly what you print with photopolymer resin. Just make sure you wear gloves when you're handling this stuff. I'll actually use an old paintbrush and put this on the seams of the model and uh, cure it with a pen light. Now I recommend in using this for like surface or very very small seams and gaps because you don't want to fill your gap with this stuff and try to cure it because what's going to happen is you'll actually cure the top layer of it but whatever's down inside will not cure. I don't care what you try uh, and once you paint your model and leave it up for a little while, guess what's going to happen? That's right, you're going to have seeping resin come out of your model and just totally ruin it. And so the last thing that I use, and I've been using this stuff for probably 20 years, and that's the small little tube of Tamiya putty. Now I'll use this for very, very light scratches and seams. You can thin it out with water. It goes a long way, dries quickly, and you can sand the hell out of it if you need to. But uh, a lot of miniature people use this uh, in their models, and uh, it's a very, very good uh, thing for filling little small scratches and scuff marks. So another proof in the pudding sort of thing here is this Hawkeye model that just came up. And as you can see, it's still, I mean, it just came off the build plate. But the way I orientate this, like this foot right here, it actually, this is on the build plate. This is standing up where no supports are getting onto this. As you can see, there's no support divots or anything like that. You still got a flush surface that's gonna fit uh, pretty tightly with the model, uh, with the foot or the leg. I think it's actually this leg right here. And again, no, I mean, there's no support divots or anything. It's pretty, it's gonna fit pretty tight with minimal seams. Uh, I did have to print, you know, the supports on this part because that is less important than this part right here fitting with the other leg and making sure they're going to fit, you know, pretty flush together. Yeah, so these two legs, once they fit together, that's going to be your seam line right there, which is nothing. And again, I'm holding this with one hand and the camera with the other. So uh, again, there's no nasty distortion or anything like there. Uh, the pieces are going to look pretty good together once you get them fit and it's just going to be totally minimum gaps and seam lines on there. So now that I have my base all glued up here, I do see where I have a gap right here, which I knew I was going to have. And I got one here. Now I'm not so much worried about this one here because the Hulk Buster arm is going to be over it, but I'm going to go ahead and fix it. And plus I have this hole here and we'll address that a little later. I just want to talk about the gaps and seams right now. So what I'm going to do, the first thing that I'm going to use is I'm going to use this two part epoxy here and I'll show you how this stuff works. And I'll just take a little bit at a time and then I'll start going in and filling the gaps. And after a few hours, this stuff will be hard as a rock. All right, and that hole that I had here, uh, I just flattened out a piece of it and just stuck it over the top of it and kind of shaping it into the, the texture, uh, just kind of getting a little texture to it. The good thing is it's a rock. <laughs> so you can, uh, you can shape it pretty much, uh, give it any kind of texture and it will look pretty natural. Um, so it's always good to have like some of these little sculpting tools like this have a lot around that way when you start uh, doing filling and stuff you can maybe add texture to your model. Next thing we're going to use is this filler here. So this stuff comes out almost like in a toothpaste uh, consistency here. And what I'll generally do is I'll just take this and I'll just apply it like so. Um, and then I'll go back kind of wet um, wet my fingers a little bit, kind of get it up in there like so. And if you need to, you can take a brush and uh, brush this stuff into the cracks if you want. Um, all you gotta do is just get it wet and you can kind of just, as you can see, it thins out pretty easily. 
And I love this stuff. This is great stuff here. Um, and you just put it on. And once the filler is dry, I usually take my G tool and go in and sand in uh, on the areas where I can't get sandpaper there uh, and just kind of go around in some of the, the cracks and crevices and stuff and really just go in real finely and uh, sand that down, get all that residual off of there and it'll look great. Okay, everybody, I hope that helps you out in printing larger models on smaller printers. And I do want to thank my patrons for supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel by joining the Patreon, there is a link below in the description. Hey, and we've got a couple of new members this week, Zachary Sherman and Raymond Navarro. Thanks so much, guys, for joining the Patreon and supporting the channel. And if you'd like to do so, check out the Patreon below. The biggest way to support the channel is just by simply watching the videos and also sharing them. So for everybody watching out there, stay safe, get out there, create something, print, prep, paint, repeat. And until the next video, everyone, we'll see you.